Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. This is our little corner of the internet where we talk about fountain pens, inks, journals, and journaling. If you're watching, I'd invite you to subscribe. I also want to give everyone notice that this week's video is five huge mistakes to avoid before buying your next pen. So you don't want to buy a pen without watching this video. So that comes out Friday. But I don't want to waste too much time with all that sort of thing because we have a very special guest this evening. So I'm sure you know her from YouTube. She has very delightful videos, a great screen presence, fantastic voice. You've probably seen her on Instagram as well. She has a fantastic perspective on pens and inks and journaling, so many things more that I'm sure we'll get into tonight. So please give a warm welcome to Alicia Adventure Denali. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. How are you? Welcome. Thank you. I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here. Well, we're very happy to have you. And I see a lot of people already here. We'll try to keep it interactive. Um, so if people have questions, I'm not sure if you can see them, but if I put them up, I'll read some as we okay. go along. So it'll kind of get people involved as well. So very nice uh, stuff. So I thought um, maybe you could tell us what are you passionate about these days? <laughs> oh, these that's helpful these days because I think days. that's really important to. <laughs> sure, we have to make that uh, distinction, or we'll be here. Distinction, for, you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, right now, I am really inspired to make my own clothes, and Ooh. so I'm starting off with something I'm I've already learned, but I'm still really inexperienced with and that's knitting mm -hmm. uh, but i will be progressing through and sewing clothes with a machine and by hand and so that's what i'm excited to be doing right that, now that, that is exciting i've been following your knitting yeah. i've seen it on youtube i've seen it on instagram and i'll tell you i've never had the desire in my life to knit until now mm -hmm. like i've literally <laughs> been watching your video and i'm asking myself could i knit like an Irish Aran sweater for myself because I would love to, but it looks really hard, but I'm like, could I do it? And, and I've never asked myself that kind of question before. So. That's excellent. I'm really excited to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's a, only ever just a thought, I think that's really a, a cool thought to have. Well, my process is like I have thought and then I ruminate on it for a few months and then eventually mm -hmm. it turns into action. Mm-hmm. Which is, you know, kind of how the uh, YouTube evolved, you know? Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, actually, I don't know if this would be an appropriate time, but I am curious how you did get into YouTube. Oh, so. yeah, sure. I mean, you can ask questions anytime, of course. It's fun to make it more interactive, I think, for the people watching, too. But um, so for me, it was like a lot of people during lockdown. Mm -hmm. I was working from home in this space and I kind of started out on TikTok because it was this new thing and my wife kind of showed it to me and I was like, oh, this is fun. So it was like show and tell where I was like picking up a book or a pen, which I'm into or pocket knives or watches. Like I have a lot of interest in things, but it was the fountain pen content that took off on TikTok. And then after a while, I kind of got bored of TikTok and I was like, I don't think that it's going to be sustainable. And I also mm -hmm. wanted to have something longer than 30 seconds. So I started the YouTube and then the YouTube kind of took off on its own, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah. Cause I mean, what, what's your creative process going into a YouTube? Like where do you get your inspiration? How do you put it in mm. to a factor? Do you just say, I'm going to do one now? Like, What's that like? I'm going to do one now. It's <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> very in that moment. If I'm inspired, I do it. Uh, which, mm, can make it a little tricky when I feel yeah. like I need to put out a video or if I pre-record videos, which I do often, um, and then and schedule them for a couple weeks in advance. And by the time that day comes around, I'm not inspired anymore to share that. And I feel weird about posting the videos. So. Oh, does that happen? Do you create one and then you end up not posting? Sometimes, it? yeah. Really? Wow. I've gotten better wow. about it to let it go and just be like, let it go. Let it go out there. Right. It's yeah, fun. because it was of the time, right? Yeah. Wow. I, I don't know if it relates to that, but I actually created an entire video 
and then I scrapped it. And yeah. it was on how to create a unique signature. So mm. not a bad topic, but this, yeah. this is what's so funny about it. So I was using my own um, you know, numb to internet as an example. And I was writing Hemingway Jones, all these different ways. And um, once I looked at it at the end, after I was like editing it, I looked at the final product. I was like, they all look the same. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like I was like, you could try it this way or this way. It was like an extra line, you know. Yeah. And I, I kept the script, but I I trashed it. That's that's great. <laughs> kind of <laughs> want to see that video now, <laughs> right? Well, I still have the script, so I guess I could do it again. Yeah. So so that's brave, I think, to create something and and then not put it out there if you feel like it's not in line with where your heart is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something that's really, that's just a very big part of my process, which I think can be good because that means when I am sharing, it's because I'm really excited about what I'm sharing. Oh. Uh, but it does have its drawbacks because then I'm not as consistent or, you know, I can't just pump a video out every Tuesday and Thursday and, mm. and be done with it. It's a little more ambiguous unfortunately so yeah, a little more personal too right because you're really drawing right. from where from where you are and, and what you're putting out there yeah and i think one of the things i notice and i i really admire about your channel and i i've been watching your channel for a long time and um it's like your channel is really about you you know like i i think people come to see you it's not mm. like you're showing a pelican pen and they're like i, I want to see that pen i think mm -hmm. most people are tuning in because of your presence the way you present yourself and that you connect very well with the camera and with the people watching i think thank you that's really great feedback <laughs> because sure. i <laughs> I, mean, like, I look at, i look critically i don't know if you do this mm -hmm. but like when i look around youtube sometimes i'll be like i'll, I'll see something like oh no there's a really bad cut there in some mm. ways, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you actually have very few cuts. I notice, like you'll take out mm -hmm. if you're coughing or if you're something, or you're like, I gotta go run an errand, and, and mm -hmm. you're back, you know. Yeah. And that's not easy. I don't. I don't know if, as somebody who makes these videos too, it's not easy to go and speak extemporaneously mm -hmm. for 10, 15 minutes without a cut. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a fan. You know. Good job. Thanks. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so in in that collection of yours which one thing really interesting mm -hmm. i watched your video that had your entire collection and you have a lot of interesting pens but you also have a lot of odd pens that i also have oh cool yeah it was like weirdly synchronous to this yeah like, i have the benu brown orchid mm -hmm. Uh-huh. I have the Pelican M600 Red Tortoise. Awesome. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, these are kind of outliers, maybe. They're kind of outliers. <laughs> a little more, right? And then we both have a um, an 823, but mm -hmm. that's not so weird, I guess. But, you know, yeah. but those, <laughs> certainly those two, I, I, there might have been another one, but I was just kind of surprised at that. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, this she's got a good collection because it looks a bit like mine. <laughs> Well, you're, you seem to be really heavy into vintage pens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love... Why is that? Oh. I am a huge fan of experiencing history mm -hmm. uh, in a really personal, hands-on experience way. Uh, I also really appreciate the very individual personality that each one has because yeah. these were pens that were written with for decades potentially and they definitely have tuned to their user and so there's no two alike same brand yes. same company same year of manufacturing they're all very different from each other and yeah. so it's kind awesome. of fun to discover what that pen's personality is it really is i also find that Maybe before 1960 or so, the tolerances in manufacturing weren't as strict. 
So mm. each iteration was slightly different. And sometimes they even slapped different clips on them and even different nibs sometimes than right. what you would expect yeah. or fill systems or whatever, because they, they mm. weren't that concerned about exact specifications like we are now. So Yeah. Well, and there was also a lot more hands creating those pens, like actual yeah. person, an actual person tuning that pen, putting it together, testing it, rather than, you know, a lot of components being manufactured in, in a bigger setting. So they are very personal. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And those steel nibs that they made in those days, I, it's like some kind of alchemy. You know, <laughs> I have a, a Waterman 52 and a half, and I have a Waterman 5 in celluloid, mm -hmm. with, both with flex nibs. I don't know how they do it. I look at them, they're these tiny little nibs. They and they're bend. steel? I believe they're steel, aren't they? Or are they gold? I don't know. I, I would be surprised if they were steel. Yeah, maybe they're gold. But even still, yeah. they're these tiny little nibs. Yeah. And they just flex like brushes. Yeah. Like, how did they do that? And why can't they do it now? Yeah. Some, I've heard a couple of conflicting theories. One is that just the, the amount of gold that was used or the manufacturing made it a little bit different, but also some people have suggested that they think the gold, the nibs are flexier because they've been used for so long. And mm -hmm. maybe when they were brand new, they were stiffer. Oh, yeah, I don't know. That's hard a bit to say. Weird. It is but... hard to say, unless we had a time machine. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, if only we could, that would be amazing. I know. I, I mean, I often wonder, like, I like old digital cameras. Mm -hmm. Like the original digital camera from Canon was a 5D. And the way mm -hmm. it takes pictures looks like film because the they set the sensor and kind of the algorithm of putting it all together to mimic film in those days, not to make mm -hmm. a perfect picture. So it has yeah. so much more personality. Maybe it's something similar, whereas the old nibs were trying to emulate what came before, like mm -hmm. a, a dip pen or something. I, I don't know. Right. Yeah. It's just my theory. No, no proof. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still such great stuff because I don't know. Do you find that different pens like inspire you in a different way? Yeah, very much. Very much so. I think that's why it's so easy to have a collection because uh, they all bring something new to the table. They all put you in a different mood or in a different yeah. space, different time perhaps even yeah yeah i could see that do you um ever sometimes have this almost identity moment like i do this is me asking you if you have this feeling that i <laughs> <laughs> where you go like who am i today like what am i yes which pen goes with who i am today yeah what do i want to convey and yeah absolutely yeah, and it's yep. all about, it's almost another way of expressing yourself, like writing a poem or mm -hmm. painting something. It's it's another way to sort of interact with your world. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which pen are you using lately? Right now, I am using a Caveco Sport. Oh, very which nice. I, so I have been a long time big fan of the brass, but recently yes. I got the bronze. And yes, so yeah, I knew that about you. I was, I was <laughs> going to ask about that. How is it? Oh, I love it. I wow, really surprised because I had decided not to get it when it was released. I was a little disappointed with the promo pics, and again, so content with my brass sport sure. that I didn't feel the need necessarily to have another good <laughs> 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 pen. <laughs> and and then a friend on Instagram received his and said that he liked it a lot more than the brass and that it just wow. had a different feel and he really appreciated how it felt in the hand and that's kind of what sold me and I thought I should just give this a try and I'm really gr glad that I did because it's a beautiful pen and it's wow. really subtle. Yeah. I feel like the pictures don't do it justice. It's it's a whole experience in person. So is it aesthetics? Is it warmth? Is it weight? Mm all of those things wow really because this is heavy <laughs> yes and you know, the bronze that's... is just a little bit heavier oh it's heavier than this wow that's challenging 
Because I've often said that you could take this and throw it as hard as you can, <laughs> you know, across a mountain, then go retrieve it, and it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. So if it's heavier than this, it'll probably go six inches into the ground. <laughs> you have to dig it up. Yeah. <laughs> but it's very shiny, and it's a little bit more tarnish resistant, I would imagine. Yeah, let me, if you don't mind. Not at all. I'll grab it. Well, it looks like Allie J just got one, too. There you go. I see all you guys. All right. Nice. I feel like it's difficult. Again, this is a very difficult material to capture on film. Sure. Uh, so maybe with a brass uh, next I think to you it, can which see honestly... It. Can I, the uh, brass is on your right hand. This is the brass. And the, okay. This is the bronze. The bronze is a little bit pinkier. Yeah, it looks blonder and, from here. Yeah, blonder. The way it reflects light is really soft. Like it's, you know, those uh, filters that some scenes in a movie have to make everything look kind of hazy and magical. And sure. it mm -hmm. looks like you're looking through a filter at it. Ooh. There's a hazy, foggy softness. That, oh, it, wow. that it reflects back, which is just really cool. Yeah, I'll say. And because of that, I feel like visually it looks lighter than the brass. Like the brass is a very visually heavy material. Yes. In addition to with the, the actual feel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so this one, the even though the weight is heavier than the brass, it doesn't feel that way. It feels Ooh. almost light and airy. Hard to explain. <laughs> no, I, I think I'm following you. That was very poetic, and I think it was very well stated. Right. So it almost has a bit of like Trump Loy to it, where it's fooling your yeah. eye into believing that it's a lighter pen than it actually yeah. is. Wow. Did you get it in extra fine? I got it in fine. 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 Yeah. Even though I tend, I really like this, the tiny nibs. Yes, uh, the Caveco extra fines are just a little bit too dry for my taste. So fine seems to be where it's at for me. Gotcha. I have yeah. their 1.1 on this. Oh, fun. It is a lot of fun. It, yeah. It's really sort of straight sided. So it does that downstroke really mm. well. If you keep it nice and level, like yeah. you're troweling your ink. Yeah. Oh, that's great. It is. I, I have another one with a medium that I hardly ever use the other one. I should probably, mm -hmm. I should probably move that one along. <laughs> yeah. John Manuel asked uh, what your favorite pen is currently, if you have one. Oh, I mean, right now I'm really digging the, the bronze sport. The bronze has all your attention. Yeah. The bronze has all my attention. Nice. I, yeah, I like it a lot. <laughs> so when you get a pen, is that kind of how it works for you? Do you sort of set all your other pens aside and then just write with it for a while and see how you interact with it? What's that process like for you? If, when I receive a pen, if I like it, then I will continue to use it and focus sure. on it. Sure. If I don't like it, then I kind of put it into a rotation where I revisit it a couple of times in hopes yeah. that something new comes about. But usually I know from the, the get go, whether I'm going to like right. a pen or not. Yeah. I could see that. I do that sometimes where I'm like, Oh, I don't know about this one. And then I kind of set it aside and then I find myself getting curious about it. And then, yeah. and sometimes they win you over. In fact, there's a mm -hmm. narrative going on in my channel about flex nibs and in particular, the uh, Mont Blanc 146 with the calligraphy nib where uh -huh. I got it and I was just super disappointed. And I, I did the unboxing on the, on the air and, or I, I did it as a video, but anyway, I was like, Oh, this is great. I think, but I was kind of afraid to flex it. And then mm -hmm. I started to use it and flex it. And it's very stiff compared mm -hmm. to like, you know, a Waterman five from, 1925 yeah. yeah and i was kind of comparing it to that and i was disappointed but it never railroads it's it snaps right back you can go very mm -hmm. thin it's an extra fine which by the way i'm not very good with extra fines it's not my <laughs> million, 
So I finally, and I also took the Mont Blanc calligraphy classes, which I learned almost Ooh. nothing, but at least it was fun. And I can take them mm -hmm. again. Maybe I'll learn something one day. But I learned to really love it after a while. And I kind of made this interim video where I was like, oh, I hate it. And then there was one where, oh, okay, I'm starting to like it. So it's yeah. something that really evolves, you know? That's so great. I love that. The life is a journey that is it sometimes, really is. I mean, timing is everything. And sometimes we're just in the wrong headspace when it, when a pen comes into our lives and then that changes and it can fit. Yeah, very true. Very true. And for me, I think I'm now going from these really fat, um, heavier pens to lighter, more elegant hmm. with with more narrow nibs, which I never mm -hmm. thought I would, I would be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes my choice of journal is which pen I use. Mm -hmm. Like smaller journals, I'll use a fine or an extra fine. Do you find that? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It, that changes the choice, <laughs> the pen choice for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like how you use journals because so, you use covers and then you sort of, you get like the blanks on your shelves, or at least I saw mm -hmm. in an older video. I'm not sure if you're still doing it that way. And, um, it just looks really like almost like some kind of medieval library or something with all the Ooh. identical That's uh, nice. inserts. <laughs> yeah. I really like that, you know, cause like I went the other route where I'm going like heavy leather solid yeah, I know. covers. I've been eyeballing some things behind. <laughs> yeah, they're behind up this side. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. I, I would love to know what's behind you. <laughs> well, there's like, this yes. is 20 something years of, of journals here. So, and I finally And where did went these come from? To, um, well, lots of different places. Like I used to buy them. I used to travel to Venice a lot. And I used to buy a lot of these. So I have these in different colors. And they were like a neat way to remember your trip. Mm -hmm. And um, and this was another Venice one. It has watercolors in it, which is really cool. lovely. You kind of, I wish I could show you, but it's we're filming yeah. in HD, so people would read it <laughs> and then you know post yeah. it on the internet. And maybe I could do something like this, but it, so it has these that you're writing around, which is really cool. Yeah. And then I have the those. Um, I think you saw my Bottega Obscura journals, which I've been using yeah. lately. But like, if you're writing in this, you have to use extra fine. Like you're not using a stub, you know? Oh, that's so pretty. <laughs> it's pretty nice, right? Yeah. I feel like you should be using a dip pen. With this? Yes. Yeah, or a quill. <laughs> that would be awesome. Quills are tough though. Yeah, they are. There's plenty of turkeys in the yard. I could probably find some quill stuff. That's turkey and goose. Those are ideal for quill making. Exactly. I haven't tried it. Maybe I should because they literally we have so many turkeys around here. It's yeah. It's like the it's a, a, paper. Actually, really hard to to do. It's, yes, it's simple, imagine. but to like fin to have the finesse to create something that you mm. actually want to write with is that takes a whole skill for sure. Is it pretty stiff? The feather mm. part, that part. Not in my experience, mm. but. I am not a, I, I have played around with making <laughs> quill pens, but sure. I have never created anything I like to write with. So we have more I experience have not, than yeah. I do. In it, so. <laughs> Did you use your open all, um, pocket knife? I may have, mm. I honestly can't remember. It was a while ago that nice. that could have been a possibility or just an exacto knife. Oh, very nice. Are you still carrying that? Is that your, your mm -hmm. good? Oh, nice. Yeah, it's very nice. It has like a kind of a like a French rural charm to it. Yeah, I mean, it is French. Exactly. <laughs> I like I have um, I always mangle the pronunciation, but it's like La Yoles. Have you ever seen those? The mm -mm. they're like shepherd's knives from France, and they're usually made out of bullhorn and um, they have really interesting blades. They often have um, wine openers and things on them. Oh, as, you, as one does, you know, in the country. Yeah. Are these a like a sickle shaped blade? Um, no, they're usually just kind of like a regular shape, okay. sort of like old school knife shape. But yeah. my usual knife I carry is a Tonto um, 
Benchmade. Okay, I don't know what that is. It, it's a Benchmade called a bailout, and th it has a tom mm. made, which is like that. Cool. So you get is that sharpened on? Yeah. Yes, okay. it's sharp here and it's sharp here. It's originally a Japanese design, which is makes it really tough if you were like puncturing mm -hmm. something. But I mean, I use it for opening Amazon boxes and like cutting out articles yeah. in the New York Times so I can. Get <laughs> you know but yeah. but you find like it's handy but like you, you know you always yeah. like you can't substitute a knife yeah i to. agree it's really nice to have a knife it's funny i remember on one of my videos i shared that open l knife i think it, that's what it was and someone was like what do you where do you live that you feel like you need to defend yourself <laughs> And I was like, it's not for defense. I mean, yeah. that would be the worst knife to defend. Like, wait one sec while I pull this blade out and and lock it. Uh, Sincerely. But, but no, it just is really handy. I feel like anytime I don't have a knife with me, I'm like, ah, I need a knife right now. <laughs> yeah, me too. I keep a spider co in my work bag. And like mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. people are like, oh, I need to open a box. I'm like, here, I got it. You know, and then. Yep. But I agree. And people, people make that comment to me sometimes. It's like, uh, you know, it's a weapon. And it's like, no, like, that's not how I view these things at all. Like, yeah. It's just it's a, a tool. if you, yeah, it's a tool. Exactly. So but very cool. But, but yeah, you, you definitely, I watched your EDC video, which is a lot of fun. I, I, I enjoy those. I do too. Right. I did one not too, too long ago. I'll have to watch that. I'm sure it's riveting. <laughs> but um, i'm sure it is for someone that enjoys watching everyday carries i'm sure it will be thank you well i always find that there's that one i wish i could it's like patrick mckinnon or something he's one of those like youtubers that everyone watches but he's kind of a kind of a bro channel and he does mm. a lot of like edc stuff that's kind of his main drive and he's his videos are so snappy you know he's like mm. snapping it and then he does like um close-ups of his hands and all this kind of stuff and mm -hmm. like i'm kind of like are you still shooting your videos on your phone mm -hmm. see that's good and it's a it's an iphone right yeah nice because i do the same i shoot everything i do on a phone awesome yeah because i need it to be there yeah it's nice to yeah it's so nice to a phone is something that probably all of us or most of us carry constantly uh, and so anytime there's an opportunity, it's nice to be able to just pull it out and, and film. Absolutely. I think it makes it almost like a little purer because it's much less obtrusive, especially mm -hmm. I shoot a lot in locations like museums and libraries and mm -hmm. things. And I, I tease my wife that she's like a human um, um, gimbal because oh. <laughs> I bought a gimbal. And yeah. I used it a couple times, and it's not as good as when my wife walks holding it. Oh, she's like so good at it. And um, but it's a lot easier for us when we're trying to be creative somewhere because mm -hmm. people don't really stare at you if you just have a phone. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a little more subtle. Exactly. And, and fairly common that people have a phone and they're filming or taking a picture. Whereas a camera is a statement, they're doing something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then maybe they'll say you need a permit or something. Right. <laughs> yeah. you well, your get... videos all look really good. I I oh, wouldn't have guessed that you were filming on a phone. Yeah, all on the phone, all of it. And it's a very special phone. It's a daddy phone. You can always tell because it has stickers. Aww. <laughs> exactly. so, That's but sweet. Um, I had to get the terabyte to hold all the hd mm, uh, mm -hmm. clips which which i use fast and to me this medium is kind of ephemeral so i create mm -hmm. it and then i have to delete everything so yeah. it only then exists on youtube because yep. it would just so it's it's like 200 gigs for a 15 minute video the way that final cut pro saves things i don't mm -hmm. know why but I, I couldn't possibly have all that storage <laughs> yeah do you um, ever get recognized when you're out and about? I, actually, this these past couple of months, I've been twice now, and it's the first time ever. Really? Uh, one was at a more obvious place. That was when I went to Yoseka Stationery. So I was like, well, of course. <laughs> yeah, you're in context. <laughs> yep, exactly. Uh, 
But the other place was here in Tucson at a restaurant. I was out to eat with some family and this gentleman stopped me and he's like, hey, are you Adventure Denali? And I was like, yeah. He's like, I really enjoy your channel. And like, he was saying that he never was into pens, but he got a Caveco Brass Sport now. And nice. it was just like, that's super cool. Yeah, that's really great when you get the stories of how you spark an interest for someone. That's great. Yeah. That's super exciting. Let me see. We do have a question from Michael Smith. Alicia, what's your favorite EDC pen case mm. for carrying like three pens? Oh, I guess yeah. Chris Sines asked that question as well. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, uh, let me get them. I feel like I, I should just yeah, share why not? them. Props are good. If Seek is on my wish list to visit, Ali J says. There's so many places I want to go, so many pen shows to see. Have you done any pen shows? No. They are so fun. Is there one in Arizona? Not that I know of. Mm. I wonder where your I've... closest one, maybe Colorado. Yeah, or California. Or... Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I That could be very dangerous. <laughs> they are. <laughs> But there's usually a lot of really nice vintage pens. Yeah, I know. That's yeah. why it's dangerous because yeah, I would go in exactly. and be like, I have to buy all of these because I'll never see them again. <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of how you feel. Yeah. All right. So probably my most used pen pouch is this. It's just a fabric pen pouch made by Hurlstone in New Zealand. It Ooh. has a lot of ink stains all over it because I have used this one for years. I just really like it. It's simple. It has, it's really, it's just really minimal and I appreciate that. And I also just really like the fabric. It's lined in velvet and has like a very durable upholstery fabric and a little pocket in the back, which is really oh. great because you can, I've, I usually put a, like a cleaning cloth in there because you never oh. know when a pen it's ink everywhere <laughs> yes and uh so that's nice to have it has it's made for two pens it has two separated compartments here but i can fit four pens if you don't mind your pens touching right so, yeah you, i mean i can do you baby your straight. pens do you feel or, mm -hmm. or are you one of these people that's like if it's scratched it's wabi sabi i my in, instinct is to not baby them Mm -hmm. And that's generally what I do. But then a lot of some of my vintage pens, uh, I started noticing the wear on them and, mm -hmm. and then it made me feel a little protective mm -hmm. and which is unfortunate because I feel like I don't use them as much as I once did because I, I was carrying them around everywhere mm -hmm. I went, I using them primarily only. Uh, and just now I, I do feel like they're a finite resource and it's uh, harder for me to, yeah, well, what, but my modern pens, I don't, my contemporary pens, I don't baby gotcha. at all. No, I think that's reasonable. Like and one of another thing I really admire about you and your channel, it's something I try to push on my channel a bit is like, get some sunshine on your pens. <laughs> You know, like I a mean, lot they're of people, meant to be used, right? They're meant to be used, and a lot of people you keep them in cases. They're on your desk. Here's my eight twenty three, yeah. which I'm I'm using. I'm trying to use up the ink, and mm -hmm. I just quite can because I want to put um, Earl Grey tea in here from Dominant huh? Industries, and I have Ancient Copper in here, which is pretty nice. Nice, but um, anyway, get them out in the sun and use them and take them around, like incorporate them into your life. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah, because we get so protective. Mm -hmm. Well, too. I know you love this, so I figured I'd yes. bust it out, right? That was the buy of the century. <laughs> Gosh, that's so gorgeous. Yeah, it's wanna... so cool. Did I, did I tell you the story behind it? I don't know if you heard. I know you we were on that one live, but I bought that Egyptomania pen. Right. Which is the yes. only pen that has a nib that feels like an, an, a waterman from the 20s. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't have any line variation. But it has mm -hmm. that same feeling. It just collapses. Mm -hmm. But um, 
I was doing the video and I went online and I was looking for other sort of Egyptomania items because I was going to talk about the movement and that came up and I didn't buy it. And then I did a part two of the video and it came up again and I was like, I got to buy it. So I, that's, <laughs> it, just, it's like, it just got under my skin, but it sat there for yeah. like a few months. I'm so lucky. That's very lucky. And it was just a, <laughs> it was an antique shop in Scotland. Amazing. And they shipped it to me. So super fun. Meant to be. Do you have ink in there right now? I do. That's why I was very careful because um, <laughs> I, I use it. It has a Gerbon Eclat de Saphir, which is kind of my go-to ink. Mm -hmm. That for, seems appropriate. Yeah. I there. really like that one. And it's great for business and stuff, but it just, it looks so vivid on the page. And I, I love how mm -hmm. like saturated it is and it, and share upon inks are just so like, they're what I call like good guy inks. They're not going to mm. let you down. They're not going to give yeah. you up. They're not going to hurt your pen. Because I have <laughs> this one. Sounds like a song. It sounds like it could be a song. It could Yeah, be. I feel like you're going to break out in song right now. <laughs> I think I was rip rolling you a little bit there. But um, yeah. <laughs> I have this one brown ink that I would put it in my vintage um, Estrabrooks. And mm -hmm. it would dissolve the bladders inside. Oh, it no. was like corrosive, whatever it was. So I put a skull and crossbones on the top of it. And I only use it for dipping <laughs> now. Yeah. It's pretty funny. So what do you think is people's maybe misconception about you? I don't know. That I'm a pen reviewer? <laughs> you know, that's good. And I think that's probably accurate. Because, like, I certainly don't see you as exclusive to pens. Because your your site's very much a vlog, and it's very much mm. about you. You're at the center. You're you're like Prospero at the center of your temple. <laughs> and one day it's knitting, and then it could be typewriters, and it could be yeah. something else. You and I look at your numbers because that's what I do. I'm always like I I critique and I learn from others. You're audience follows you whatever you do mm. yeah i'm learning that it's really i feel i feel very blessed very touched to but yeah that's special yeah it really is and i think it's nice because you also have your own identity with adventure denali it doesn't say you know pen reviewer denali you know so right. <laughs> you have the capacity to grow beyond yeah yeah which is good. Well, that is good because who knows? Maybe I'll move on to a sailboat, take you all along. <laughs> you, I'm sure it would be awesome. And we'll be asking which pen. I'm sure it'll be nautical brass yeah. or bronze. Which pen and ink would you take on a sailboat? Which pen and ink would you take on a sailboat? Well, I asked you first. Oh, that was a question. <laughs> I thought it was rhetorical. Sorry. It, it was what? rhetorical, but then I wrote it. I guess we'd have to, it would have to be like bulletproof blue ink, right? Or something. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I would probably take this. I mean, I think it's yeah. probably the most appropriate, but it would have to yeah. be like incredibly waterproof ink, like Bay State blue or something, <laughs> which would yeah. probably make the, the whole sailboat would be blue by the time it got back to port. Uh-huh. Stains Forever. on everything. <laughs> yes, exactly. How about you? I, I mean, I'm, I think I'm just going to have to line up with what you said, because I think that, yeah, something super waterproof and a very durable pen that can mm. take a beating and get right. wet. Do you sail? No. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's no ocean there. I noticed no. that. <laughs> we just paddle out in the sand. Right. The canoe. Right. No. <laughs> we have an ocean. Yeah. Uh, Massachusetts. Are you on the coast? Are you, well, you I mean, I'm, 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 I see the coast a lot, but no, I mean, I'm like <laughs> 45 inland. minutes west of Boston. Yeah. Okay. So, and not too but far it's... from New Hampshire, where you spent some time, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. When I was a baby. Oh, nice. Um, do, you, do you know what part of New Hampshire? I mean, you must know. Bedminster is Bedminster. what I want to say. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. Don't worry. And it. then upstate New York and somewhere in New Jersey. Nice. Everyone passes through Jersey. That's like a yeah. passage. <laughs> That's the joke, right? What what when someone says 
you're there from New Jersey, you ask what interstate. That's right. So. Which exit? Which exit? Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> I was exit four, which is like yeah, right, right off of Cherry Hill. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, is there? Oh. A... Yeah, please. Sorry, I just someone posted AZ had an ocean 300 million years ago. Thank you. We do have an ocean. We that's once right. had an ocean here. <laughs> that's right. And there was that horse with no name song, right? The desert is an ocean. Right. Yes. Yes. So I was going to ask, is there something about you that you want to get out more about, you know, something about your channel or something about mm. your, you know, personality or something you've been trying to say, bigger theme, something like that. I try to hit you with the fun open-ended question, so I'm not like, you know, Ooh. where were you on this night? <laughs> I guess, I mean, if you're new to my channel, mm -hmm. what I want you to know is that it will kind of be all over the place. Whatever I'm inspired to share in that moment, that's what we'll go with. Nice. And it's pretty casual. I'm not a professional Sometimes the lighting is bad or my fingernails are dirty or. <laughs> That's or what's great about whatever. it. It's fan like one so. of the things I love is like, oh, she's in a tent now. You know, or <laughs> yeah. you're like, okay, last week she was in her drawing room. Now she's in the tent yeah. and she's talking. Oh, and man. That's pretty great. So that, that just, I, if I could live in a tent, an old, like a, a canvas yes. wall tent with a little stove. That would be pretty great. I would that do that. Nice. That sounds really, I was, um, I used to really be into rock climbing, um, mm. in my twenties and thirties and always camping really small and little light tents and things. Mm -hmm. I, I climbed in Colorado, never in Arizona, but, um, in New York and New Hampshire and, uh, went camping again, a little older. And I was like, I'm not going to take this tiny tent. So I went to L.O. Bean and I bought the like three room cabin. <laughs> nice. Because usually you're parking your Jeep, you're pulling it out. Why? You don't need like a backpacker tent. Right. It was, and we got cots. It was fantastic. Oh, man. So that's yeah. great. So I'm right there with you. Were you traveling for rock climbing specifically? I used you... to. Yeah. I was wow, really awesome. into it. Really. It was. It was um, a big passion of mine, but I found that it was taking up so much of my bandwidth. I started to lose myself, mm. you, mm -hmm. you know, like almost literally, um, I'm six, yeah. two, I was 155 pounds when I'm climbing and I'm like two fifteen now. Mm -hmm. And I don't think like I could use, I could lose a few pounds, but I'm not like obese, you know? And it's like, I used to think I was heavy back then when I was like oh, 155. Man. It's a shame. And I was yeah. climbing like four days a week. Like I was so into it. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like, I mean, a big part of my life is books and writing and, and, you know, pens and journaling. And a lot of that was falling by the wayside. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for your very open and honest answer. Most... Sure. But I think it's, it's kind of important. I think there's a great lesson about balance there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And, and the YouTube adventure for me is pushing me out of my comfort zone. Mm. Like some of my videos went to places that I never thought I would say publicly. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's kind of important. I think sometimes the video has to live its own life in a mm -hmm. way, you know? So like sometimes I write these essays and then I'll give it to my wife, like, what do you think of this? Does it make a decent script? Can I say that? And she, she'll be like, oh, maybe change this. Or she'll be like, that's awesome. You know, like I have one I wasn't sure about recently. And she's like, that's awesome. You have to do it. And I'm working on it mm -hmm. right now. It's kind of really exciting. So when you're not doing live streams, you, you script it generally? Yeah. You, for yeah. the most, like I have a couple of different like types of video that I put up. I do mm -hmm. the live show every Tuesday. And then on my Friday video, sometimes I do lists because I find them to be fun. Like this week is like, you know, don't make these five mistakes in buying your next pen. And, mm -hmm. and I think it's good information, but it's kind of fun. And it's kind of thing that you do off the top of your head because you want it to be spontaneous. Right. You might, you might have bullet points, but that's it. Yeah. But then I also do these, what I call like high concept videos where 
sometimes I'll incorporate more than one narrative mm -hmm. and, and I have like more than one B-roll. So it gets a bit complex and those right. are scripted. Yeah. You never script. No, I, for the first time, wrote a script oh. for a video that will never be on my channel, but I actually wow. got re someone reached out uh, and asked if I'd be willing to make a video for a zebra ballpoint pen wow. that they wanted to be put on an Amazon page and they would pay me. And it was really fun. <laughs> and I, wow, had, I had a really great time with it. And I'm so glad that I got to write my own script because, you know, there was things they wanted me to mention, but it still felt really authentic. I didn't have to like lie about anything. And right. do I use zebra ballpoint pens? No, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. don't. But I was still able to like bring it in to my life somehow and, and make a video and it was really fun. And writing a script initially felt a little challenging, but it actually went a lot smoother than I anticipated. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. You don't do a lot of, I, I don't think I've ever seen a sponsored video either. Mm -mm. I mean, no, I've had send you pens, but that's different. Yeah. Nobody yeah. pays you to review an item. Mm -mm. So. Mm -hmm. That's good. Do you? How do you feel about sponsored posts? Do you? Mm. Do you ever feel almost hesitant to say anything negative because you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings? You know, and I'm projecting because I feel that way sometimes. But then I feel like, um, as a reviewer, because I'm a little more of a pen reviewer than you are. I mean, it's a big mm -hmm. part of this channel. My my allegiance is to the viewer. Mm -hmm not to the manufacturer shop. Right. Yeah. And I think it's, that's a really tricky, that's a tricky space to be in. I, I feel that, I mean, ultimately life is expensive and if you can somehow earn something from whatever you're doing, whatever your hobby is or whatever you're passionate right. about or whatever your, your job is, uh, I think that's really awesome that some people get those opportunities. It is tricky though, because then it's hard to know what the, the authentic, what is that person's real feeling about it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and also some companies seem to sponsor a lot of people. So you see it over and over and over and you just kind of get like tune it out after yes. a while. Like, yes. I'm not even going to yeah. pay attention anymore. I've heard this, whatever, like, a, I don't know. I can't think of anything right now. Well, I'm like, let's say like out. Squarespace or something like, right. but if Squarespace <laughs> wants to sponsor me and pay me like a thousand dollars a post for sticking a 30 second ad in the middle, oh, I think have... people will understand. I think I'm up yeah. for that. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been offered? No. That... Oh, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know. I mean, you know, I have a very, yeah. uh, a very niche audience. I think you know somebody would be interested in marketing to them, but, but I think yeah. there's a balance there because you see the bigger channels doing that kind of stuff all the time, where it's like suddenly they're talking about I don't I don't even know what there was that one. Oh, do you remember the Scottish Lords? Have you ever seen that one? Where it, it's it was a it was kind of a scam. It was, you could own a piece of Scotland, so you could oh, call yourself yes. like the Laird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, I don't think I would have done that one because, yeah. it, I mean, my wife's British. I would have just been embarrassing. So I, <laughs> I don't think I would have done that one. But, oh, but, gosh. but, you know. So um, when you find yourself in those moments, as we all do, where you're, you're not as inspired as you normally are, how, how do you... I, I, how do you refresh that? How do you refresh your well of creativity? Ooh, that's a great question. And when you find the answer, let me know. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I have techniques that, mm. that I do. I, um, I, you know, I could kind of give you a little bit of an answer and stall for time for you on, on your answer. But, I mean, but I, I, I yeah. can give you an answer now, but okay, I love to please. hear what you what I have to say. <laughs> Because usually, I i mean, when I'm not inspired, it feels 
uh, I feel panicked, mm. honestly, because feeling inspir inspired is such a big part of my being. Yes. That's what motivates me and encourages me and keeps me going. And when I don't feel inspired, it's like, oh gosh, what am I What happened? Do? Yeah, how did and, I lose my way? Yeah, and I, I think ultimately it just takes time. I, mm. Because forcing it doesn't help. Trying to find a solution, trying to, at least with me. Uh, and so I think I, I just take a step back and take a break. Uh -huh. and focus on something else. And then when I least expect it, boom, like this fountain pen, I haven't been using fountain pens for a while now. I've been using mechanical pencils lately. Yes. No. And then I get this fountain pen. It's like, boom, I'm right back there with the fountain pens and I love them. And I, nice. you know, so. I think it's good to have tides, you know, yeah. different interests that ebb and flow in your life and not to force it, like you're saying. And I even saw on your channel, I thought it was really great um, because you were like, oh, I'm going to get all the fountain pen. People are going to be upset, but I'm using a Yosika rollerball or something. I, I miss which <laughs> pen it was, but I knew it wasn't a fountain pen. And I was like, that's yeah. so cool. Like, well done. <laughs> like, Because, you know, once again, you're very you and you can't you can't sort of miss that. Like you have that thread through everything. Like, you know who you are and you, you present yourself well in your videos. And I think that's what makes it so compelling. Cause I yeah. like, I don't see that myself. Like when I watch my own videos, I, I wish I mm -hmm. could connect the way you connect. Like I feel mm -hmm. like with you and, and some other folks too, it's like you're part of their lives for that instance. Mm. You know, like it's, it's very friendly. It's well done. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I, I mean, you never know what one person's experience is, but I'm I'm surprised that you, to hear you say that just because I've I've read through your comments on videos people are really engaged like you have it seems like a very strong community people that really identify with what yeah. you have to say so Thanks. I think that's really incredible I think the best part of my channel is the community of people who watch it <laughs> they are amazing they never cease to amaze me I try to stay really active in the comments too mm Hmm which is which is really nice but it's been a fantastic experience I've, I've been on youtube for about a year and a half and um i've learned a lot and i kind of there's a lot i wish i knew like i wish i had a mentor mm. you know because like i think you just bought a computer not too long ago you used to edit completely on your phone are you still mm -hmm. editing on your phone or did you move to some kind of stuff yeah primarily what if i need to do something a little more complicated but just iMovie iMovie gotcha yeah because like i started out the same i was using iMovie and then i would edit on my ipad and it kept crashing oh god <laughs> yeah. that's very frustrating because it's really like your average cut length you know not to get too technical it's probably like 10 minutes before you're like in your cuts you know and like mine's like eight seconds oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The poor <laughs> iMovie was like, I give up with you. I yeah. had enough. I can't, I can't take it. So, so uh, you're using a computer now and Final Cut Pro, it sounds yes. like? Yes. Yep. Final Cut Pro now because I started to look at a lot of content outside of the pen world. Like I, I was afraid when I first started the channel of watching too many other pen content creators because I didn't want to be any way derivative. I wanted to have... Mm -hmm my own clear said voice. Um, but I looked at a lot of like watch content. There's a lot of people who make really exquisite watch mm. videos mm -hmm. that, that are similar to what we do, where we talk about history and how the pen feels and how you interact. Cause mm -hmm. what I thought was a niche was that there were a lot of people talking about the particulars of a pen, but not a lot of people get into this kind of stuff you get into where it's like, well, what does this pen do for you? How does it make you feel? Right. How do you express yourself through it? It, it, it like it, it matters a lot less the size, but the feeling and the heritage and the emotion of it. I mm -hmm. think. Yeah, for sure. It's nice that there's something out there for for every for everybody, everybody, like, yes. you know, some people really like those technical specs. Oh, and so do I, I, I don't mean it like, if I sound like, Oh, I'm no, 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 I know right. you're not. Yeah, yeah. I just, <laughs> it's not something I ever think about, which is why they're not 
really in my videos. I so. sometimes forget, you know, like, yeah. and then people will say in my comments, like, well, you could have mentioned that you can't use right. a converter. I'm like, well, I mean, you know, I wasn't <laughs> even thinking about that. You know, I was filming in a museum. Back off. <laughs> yeah, super fun, though. But um, what happened is you, you kind of, if you're trying to express something through a video and you get more complex, you just need more tools. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, you know, sometimes my ambition exceeds me. <laughs> you know? But I've learned so much. Yeah. Well, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always a little bit tempted to try something more technical and it, like Final Cut Pro, but, but I don't know. I don't know if that'll, that would work for me ultimately. I think I need to, I need to keep it just really simple and casual and I'll feel more inclined. Yeah, I think whatever and, gets you to post and, and yeah. you know, your connection is very immediate. It's you through the phone. Mm -hmm. So right. I think it would only if you wanted to add music and mm -hmm. mix the sound a little bit, or if you wanted to have some more complex B-roll or something, that's really the yeah. only reason I think for it. Yeah. Which I will say when I made that zebra pen video, they, so I, I did the editing, the initial editing and then sent it to them and then they had someone edit it further so they did more cuts and they did kind of like some zoom in and they added music i was oh, yeah. like oh my gosh this looks so professional <laughs> oh nice it was really cool to see yeah yeah that is fun because yeah i movie does a little of that with like ken burns and stuff it's like yeah yeah i think <laughs> i movie too i use that for for some other stuff so it's very good so um let's see uh one of the things i wanted to ask you this is this is a uh, kind of an interesting question, I think. Where do you cut off vintage pens? You know, like we all talk about vintage pens and I know everyone has their own concept, but where do you put mm -hmm. that, you know, date wise? <laughs> it is because like you already said, everybody has a different opinion. Some people say, if the pen is no longer in production, then it's vintage. If it's mm. 30 years or older, it's vintage. If it hasn't been, if it wasn't made past 1990, it's vintage. It's, so it's really hard. I think generally the vintage pens I collect happen to be from the 30s and 40s primarily. So that's really easy to just lump yeah. them into that category. Yeah, very uh, old. But then, why aren't they called antiques? I don't know. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, we never really like, thought of that category. Yeah. Uh, and anything that's in made in the 80s and 90s feels a little bit ambiguous. Uh, it's hard to, to know if, yeah, I don't, I really don't know. Yeah, it's hard, I think. I think for me, I probably put it pre-1965 or so. Because I want to think anything vintage has to be older than I am. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, slightly yeah. different in its manufacturing. Mm -hmm. You know, in those mm -hmm. days, it was a little more artisanal, a little more, a little looser. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I think you brought up a good point about pens that are not related to when you your decades i think that's why the 80s and 90s are a little ambiguous because i was you know around during those decades so it's yeah like, exactly it's kind of hard to think but yeah, it's, yeah. i mean is an 80s like mont Blanc vintage probably is you know probably. yeah probably is yeah that's yep. good do you have a cutoff where you won't go beyond price point wise mm. Ooh. <laughs> I think, I think it really just depends on, on that particular pen, uh, gotcha. because I could give you a price point, but if that perfect pen came about that, that one of a kind once in a lifetime, then that might go out the window, you know? Yeah. I mean, if I had the money, of course, like I can't, <laughs> I don't just have like, you know, a money tree that I, Oh, okay. Well, I want this $10,000 pen. I'm going to whatever that right. so all within reason but 
I don't, I don't think, but I'm not looking at really high end pens generally either. So I, I get know. less interested when they get, yeah. they get a little silly sometimes. Like yeah. the Monte Grappa mummy right. pen. What am I supposed to do with that? Or Dante Those, Alfieri, how do I hold yeah. that? You know, They're I'd love to review to one. I should review one straight, you know, like that would be it's terrible to write with. Like, yeah, <laughs> if it's not actually meant to be written with, I'm really not that interested, you know? Yeah, same. That would be a very funny video, though, to see <laughs> you reviewing one of those pets. Honestly, you know, like, yeah. really pretty, but come on. Like, how do I put this in my pocket? <laughs> the clip is terrible. The mummy arm just yeah. falls off. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is. But um, I know for me, it's like, I, I do struggle a bit with kind of promoting materialism too mm -hmm. on the channel because mm. I, I want people to have experiences and if certainly, you know, everyone's free to make their own choices, but mm -hmm. I, I personally try to avoid that yearning for the next thing. And I try to concentrate on the things I have. Yeah. Yeah. That also, oh. Oh. sorry, my clock. <laughs> oh, is, that, is that our, our time? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm surprised it only chimed once. Usually it chimes. A I'm really disappointed. I was hoping it yeah. was nine times. We could have <laughs> just sat here and just like as a chime. Would have been such a cool way to, uh, to, yeah. to end the show, I to guess. I don't, I don't want to keep you for too long. I mean, it can get exhausting, I'm sure. Maybe we should see if there's some quick questions. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Because I, I, I think get people, it's hard to keep an eye on the questions while you're speaking. That's the right. one thing. I need yeah. a producer to feed things in my ear. Yeah. <laughs> That's when you hit the next level. Right. Right. John Manuel's complaining about pens. I'm hooked on pens. It's affecting my money health. Yeah, we're, we feel you. <laughs> believe me. Uh, we need, oh, this is an interesting concept. It's not really a question, but I'm going to put this one up so you can see it. I don't know if you can see the questions as they scroll. I can. Oh, yeah. brilliant. Well, they really updated ECAM and no one told me. Um, look at that. We need a pen library. You could check pens out to try out. That, that's that's really, brilliant. Yeah. That is, yeah. yeah. And that was one of my huge mistakes that's coming up on Friday. Don't buy a pen unless you've tried it or something yeah. similar because you right. may be disappointed. Yeah. Oh, um, that would be so amazing. How how can one create something like that? that exactly. Would be... I don't know. Yeah. Mummy Brown, Alicia, mm. Alicia, what's the oldest pen in your collection? Oldest. The old. Well, if we're not talking about fountain pens specifically, the oldest mm. pen I have is from 1860s. And that's Ooh, a retractable really? dip pen. It's a mechanical, or it's a pencil and dip pen in one. Oh, and they're retractable. So cool. That's really beautiful. Uh, cool. Oldest fountain pen is 1910s, I believe. Wow, which one is that? I think it's the Conklin, uh, the Conklin Crescent Filler. Oh, I, very nice. Which Miss was one Marilyn. of the first. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, <laughs> no. Forgive me. <laughs> Miss Marilyn Darling says that's why they have pen clubs. Mm, People do point. get together for pen clubs and yeah, which I, I should do. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I was signed up to go to a pen club meeting and then we went into lockdown and then I just never pursued that uh, afterwards. Oh, wow. Yeah, it makes it hard. Shannon yeah. Brown says, um, Alicia, I admire how you stay true to yourself in this age of social media. Thank you very much, Shannon. Yeah, well said. Ooh, Jillian Barr saying there is a pen library in the UK where you can rent them. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> very, very good. We need to do that. Maybe we, that could be our business venture and we could yeah. work on that. So. Someone asked, is Bean around? Yes, yeah. He yeah. is sleeping somewhere in the house either under the bed or a new spot that he has discovered in our, in the mudroom we have a little uh credenza i don't know what to call it it's just a uh. drawer some drawers that are raised up 
and he recently discovered that he could crawl under it and climb into the bottom shelf. Wow. And it's for I'm very lucky to have been needing something in that drawer the other day. Uh, and when I discovered him, because I wouldn't have not found him otherwise, I would have been like, where is he? Wow. <laughs> so. That that is fine. I can we have something similar. I have a cat. Mm -hmm. Ophelia. And she's a lovely black and white cat. So she has her own apartment, we call it. So she has torn the lining at the bottom of the box spring. And she climbs up in there at night. And sometimes we hear her like moving around like she's uh -huh. moving furniture. And we were moving the bed, so we took it apart. And as we moved the box spring, all her toys fell out. <laughs> it's like oh, ridiculous. That's so cute. That was Aww. super cute. We're like, oh, that's what she's doing in her apartment in the middle of the night. <laughs> yes. So good stuff. Let me see. Miss Marlon Darling, how do you how do you use your fountain mm. pens in your new job? Did you start your teaching position? Oh, no, not yet. So, okay. but I was teaching when I was in my, my, the height of my fountain pen collecting, I would say I, I was yeah. teaching. And I would bring in different fountain pens every day and different inks and the kids would get so excited because they would love to see what ink I had and what pen I had. And some of them were even like, let me know what color you're going to use tomorrow because I want to match my outfit. <laughs> so oh, cute. wow. That's so fun. I do that. I match my pens and my clothes. Nice. I, I, when I, I used to wear ties especially, but then we stopped mm, wearing ties. That, that would be a nice tie in yeah. to the ink. Nice. Well, Techno Raptor wants me to tell you about my ghost cat. So Your ghost cat. Yeah, we have a ghost cat. Like I'm a very scientific minded fellow. I'm not one to believe in anything supernatural or anything else. But <laughs> this house is very strange. And sometimes you get up to use the restroom or something in the middle of the night and you feel your cat rubbing against your leg and you go to pet mm -hmm. her and she's not there. And she's nowhere. She's not there. And then mm -hmm. sometimes my wife and I are in bed. Cat jumps up on the bed. You hear it, feel it walking. It's not there. So we say we have a ghost cat. Yeah. It's really strange. And we both feel it. Yeah. I don't know if it's a shared hallucination or what, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so don't think less of me. Yep. Hmm. Just, just put that out there. Yeah. So, well, so I, that, yeah, I'm uh, curious about your ghost cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good. So you see lots of love for Bean out there. Aw. So that's, that's good to hear. Well, I don't want to keep you too long. I, I don't want to exhaust you. It was, absolutely amazing to have you if anybody out there doesn't know adventure denali follow her on youtube fantastic videos great stuff on instagram too just always inspirational just really great stuff i had like a million other questions but oh we just have to we could do a part two i would love that i would love to have you back <laughs> again it was absolutely wonderful to have you and um you know i hope to see you again keep in touch Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this and, and you made this fun and easy. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I loved having you. So it was really my pleasure. So All right. and you. thank you to everyone who showed up and I'm sorry that there's probably some comments that were overlooked, but there were part two. So we'll yes, get part two. Front of the line <laughs> for part two. So great <laughs> stuff. Thanks everyone. It was absolutely lovely. To have you all here. Thank you, Alicia, so much. We'll see you again. Take care, Thank everyone. Bye-bye. Goodbye.